All right, well, now that we've covered all of fixed exchange rates, remember that was one, one side of the spectrum, and then the other side of the spectrum was floating exchange rates. Now, in a classic, classic, classic economic model, we get real. <laughs> because in reality, there's no such thing as a purely fixed system, and there's no such thing as a purely uh, uh, floating system, that all governments need to be prudent in managing their exchange rate. It's so critical to their own economic growth, their economic development, foreign direct investment, like their balance of payments, which is the next unit we're gonna get into. Like this, they can't screw this up. They can't just leave their currency out there to be manipulated by outside forces, which could happen if they're not paying attention. So I like to make this long, you know, this really, really extended analogy that just keeps serving you and serving you and serving you over and over and over again in economics. Doesn't matter if it's micro, macro, international development that the government's the parents. And good parents are always paying attention. They might not intervene, they might not do anything, but they're paying attention. And so governments that are good are constantly paying attention to try to monitor their exchange rate so that they can have the best outcome possible given the dynamic and the, the forces and, and opposing forces that, that, uh, that, that are underneath an exchange rate. And this one other thing I kind of want you to get in your mind also is like, you know, if your exchange, we'll get into these in the next videos, but if your exchange rate is weak, that means that your exports are very much desired by outside people. If your exchange rate is very strong, it means that you can buy a lot of imports, okay? And so strong and weak are two different kinds of, of like situations that an exchange rate might find itself in. But ultimately, they're both good and bad. And the art of economics is trying to figure out what's best for right now, okay? So knowing that, that fits in perfectly with what a managed exchange rate system is, which is basically an exchange rate system where the currency is allowed to float, but with some element of interference from the government, okay? So what does that mean? Well, as I said, no currency in the world is completely free floating. At times, the central bank will always intervene because frequent fluctuations are bad for foreign investment. And so what they do is they go, okay, hey, come here, come here, come here, let's huddle around. Central banks, people in the Federal Reserve in the United States and all the powers that be in, the, in, in any government institution go, okay, now listen, hey, shh, shh come here. All right, look at me. Uh, you know, what's the lower limit for our exchange rate? It, like how low are we really going to let it go before we intervene? So a good example of that is I live here in Chile and the Chilean peso basically has floated around a exchange rate with the US dollar about 500 to one. Okay, 500 to one. So, but sometimes it's like 450 and sometimes it's gotten all the way up to 700. In fact, recently it got all the way up to 800 and guess what happened? It came back down. So the central bank of Chile is a bunch of economists that are sitting there together going, okay, what, we want this thing to fluctuate because it actually helps us out, as we'll see in the next unit in balance of payments. It makes sure that both sides of our economy, the export side of our economy and the import side of our economy, are actually served um, uh, mutually by the fact that there'll be a, a, a gradual ebb and flow of this exchange rate up and down. There'll be like these cycles. But what happens if it goes really low? How's too, how far is too low? Because then when it gets too low, if the, if the exchange rate gets too low, meaning that it gets really, really strong, this is where you can get mixed up, really strong to say 400 pesos to one, right? So 400 pesos to one is stronger than 500 pesos to one because now you only need 400 pesos to buy one US dollar, right? So, but they don't want it too strong. So what do they do? Well, in that case, they would make measures to weaken their exchange rate, which means that the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve, the National Bank of Chile would then take out of its vault certain quantities of pesos to make them more readily available so that it floats back up, okay? But what if it goes too high? Yeah, so then the central bank has a little secret they keep and say, hey, if it gets above 700, let's intervene and keep it back down. So they've just set their limits, right? 400 and 700. 700 be an exchange rate that's really weak because the dollar is still worth one and now you need 700 pesos to buy one dollar, so it got weak. 
So what would the, Nash, the, the, the central bank have to do? Again, reach into its pocket, reach into its vault, but this time not spend pesos, because that would make it weaker, but would rather spend dollars, right? A foreign currency to bring and buy up the pesos that are out there that are in high supply and put them in, the, in their back pocket, okay? So managed exchange rates are really a look at what actually happens in uh, in, in governments, like it's one of the fascinating things. It's one of the jobs that economists do is like, how do we figure out how to manage our exchange rate in such a way that it's advantageous to business, advantageous to foreign investment and advantageous for your local population. In this case, Chilenos have the buying power to buy other products. All right, let's keep rolling along.